uh, from Samuel, Dear King Clavin. That, I think that's concise, you know, that <laughs> contains all the other uh, titles. Do you believe in individual vocation? In the words of Benedict XVI, we all have a universal call to holiness, but does God have any more specific demands of us excluding the more general things like prayer, charity, faith, etc.? If so, what are they, and why do you think they are these things as opposed to some other things? I, I definitely think we have individual vocations, but I can't tell you what they are because they're individual. I mean, obviously, the things like charity and, and faith and, um, and prayer, those are things that all of us uh, should partake in, and I think they will connect us to God and to each other. But your individual vocation is your individual vocation. I thought about this a lot because sometimes I wonder, you know, I spend so much time working uh, and my work is putting forward what I think is, what I hope uh, is God's vision, you know, something that will connect people to God. And so I think that is my vocation. I think God has honed me uh, for this and has created an instrument that is capable of doing this, even in, my, in the way it took me so long to find God. So I know a lot of the dead ends that people go down. And I think he has, he has actually created me as a weapon. You're here, here's the way I think about it, okay? Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And did that mean you should become like, you know, a stupid or, you know, not, not walk or something? No, it meant you should become the person you were meant to be, the person that you were when you were born. As they say in Zen, they say, what is your original face before you were born? That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to refine that person. That person is defined by his desires. Our, his, a person's desires are like salience of his personality. A salient is a, a jutting out place. It's a, it shows you the shape of who you are, the things you want, the things you want tell you who you are. Now, I'm not talking about the things your body wants. Your body wants food and sex and all the things that, you know, a body wants. I'm talking about the things you want as a person. And the thing, the mistake that people make, make is that they let those desires become connected to the things that they desire instead of keeping them connected to God. Because God gave you those desires to show you where to go. He, they're like a guide inside you. They will carry you to God, and they will carry you to the things God wants you to do. And it doesn't have to be your job. You know, with me, my work and my life are so intertwined, it's hard to tell the difference. But it might be family. It might be other things that you do. It might be uh, charitable work that you do in your spare time. It, it might be a million different things, but you know it by following your desires, but connecting those desires to God. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a kid, I think I have told this story before, but I, I was watching uh, with my family. My father was in show business. He was a, a radio DJ, and I was watching a guy do an ad for toilet paper, and he was dressed up as toilet paper, you know, and, and my mother turned to my father, my mother was a little snooty, and she said to my father, would you do that? And he said, it's a job, you know, <laughs> it's a job. But I thought to myself, that guy probably studied to play Hamlet. He probably studied to act. He probably went to acting school to act in the great parts. And now he's playing toilet paper. And the reason is that he has connected his desires to the desire to act rather than what he was acting for. What he was acting to bring a kind of truth, a kind of uh, portrayal to people that would deepen their lives and enrich their lives, and now he's selling toilet paper. It's an honest job. It's an honest job. I'm not running it down. I'm just saying that maybe he has gotten, dis his desires have gotten disconnected. So you want to follow your desires, but you want to follow them in such a way that they are, that they connect you to the the person, God, who gave you those desires. Your desires define your vocation. They define who you are. Uh, just don't don't separate them from their source because that's the supply line of truth that takes you where you want to go. Each person comes with a pathway to God built into him, uh, and it is defined somewhat by your desires. That tells you where to go. So I believe, yes, you have a vocation. This is a short answer. I just should have said that, right? I just should have said yes.